I'm one of the medical students who's been asked to perform an upper limb musculoskeletal examination on you, if that's okay. Yeah. So that just involved me having a look, having a feel, getting you to move around and also me performing a few special tests on your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists and your hands. In order to do this properly, it will require you to take off your shirt just so I can have a proper inspection and we can do some proper tests on your upper limbs. Does that sound okay with you? Yeah. Did you have any questions at all? No. Fantastic. Um, if you're happy to get started, I'll just get a few of your details. Sure. So what was your full name? John Smith. Yeah, and what was your age? 21. Great, we'll get started. First of all, having a look at them both, if I could just get you to flip them over as well. Great, and flip them back. So there's no obvious redness, rashes, um, or scars or swellings. There's no discoloration over the areas, and I'm not noticing any obvious deformities, such as ulnar deviation, which would be indicative of potentially rheumatoid arthritis. I'll just have a feel over them now. Are either of your wrists sore? No. No. Okay, great. So just having a feel over them, comparing the temperature. Yeah, any pain at all? No. So no tenderness. The temperature on both sides was normal, so not particularly warm, so no underlying obvious inflammation at least. And there was no swelling and no effusion that I could note. Um, now I'll feel for particular wrist bones, so your carpal bones. If I could just get you to splade your hand, and I'll start off with your left hand. So I can see here there's the anatomical snuff box, and in there is the scaphoid. So I can feel it there. Any pain at all? No. Okay, whilst I'm feeling for each one of these bones, just let me know if you can feel any pain, tenderness, and I'll be sure to stop. So first of all, the scaphoid is normal. Um, feeling for the lunate, which is in the center. I'll just bend your wrist. I can feel it there, and then it disappears when I move your wrist. So that's quite normal. So there's the lunate. And then the trochoetrum on the side, any tenderness at all? No. No, I'll flip your hand over. Um, any tenderness on the small bone here? So pisiform's normal. How about here? I can feel the hook of hamate. Any pain? No. No. And then having a feel in the centre here, any pain? So uh, the capitate is normal and now feeling for the last two bones here and here. Any pain at all? So the trapezoid and the trapezium are normal as well. So no obvious tenderness of any of the carpal bones. Now I'll just repeat that on the other side. So now I'll just move on to getting you to do a few movements of the wrist. So if you could just copy me. First of all, both of your hands, if you could just push them backwards like this, like they're against a wall, great. So that means that extension looks quite normal and now just flop them downwards um, and flexion looks quite normal as well. I'm just gonna stabilize your wrist. If you could just copy me by just that ways and then this ways, great. And then on the other side as well, say outwards, inwards, great. And so ulnar and radial deviation are within normal limits as well. Because the active movements were normal, I don't need to do the passive movements, but for completeness sake, I'll just do it on your left first. So extension, flexion, and then ulna and radial deviation. Great. So now we'll just move on to doing a few special tests of the wrists, in particular some tests for carpal tunnel. So just having a look at the palms first of all, I'm not noticing any wasting of the thenar eminence muscles, which is a good sign. Um, I'm just gonna get you to Place the back of both of your hands together like this for me. Great, so this is Phelan's sign. I'll just get you to hold that for a little bit um, and just let me know if you feel any pain or discomfort um, shooting down into your fingers or any tingling at all. So anything? No. Nope. No? Okay. And then I'll do the other test which is Tinnel, so just placing both of your wrists back down. I'm just going to tap over this area first of all on your left hand. Let me know if you feel any pain or discomfort or tingling. Anything at all? No. No, okay, and I'll just do that on the other side. So just moving on to having a look at your hands now, so if you can just flip them over and then flip them back. Great, so I'm not noticing any obvious redness or rashes or scars or swellings anywhere. Um, and there's no discoloration and I haven't noticed any deformities. In particular, I haven't noticed any deformities which would be indicative of rheumatoid arthritis, such as Z deformity of the thumb, as well as Swanek deformity and Brutinia's deformity or any signs of osteoarthritis, which would include Bouchard's nodes or Hebden's nodes. Um, there's no pitting of the nails or any sausage fingers, which would be indicative of psoriasis either. So moving on to having a feel of your hands. First of all, are either one of your hands sore? No. Any of the joints sore? No. No, okay, I'll start off with your left hand. So first of all, having a feel of the temperature comparing it to the other side. Um, they're both 
the same temperature and they're a normal temperature, so no obvious underlying inflammation at all. Um, I'm not noticing any obvious swellings to palpate on either one of the fingers, um, and there's no obvious effusion at any of the joints, which is good. Um, now I'll move on to feeling over the bones. So first of all, over the carpal, uh, metacarpals, and then um, feeling over the metacarpal phalangeal joints, and then the proximal interphalangeal joints, and then the distal interphalangeal joints. Any tenderness at all? No. no, okay, that's great. So now I'll move on to doing a few movements with your fingers if that's okay. So I'll just get you to flip over this hand first and I'll start with your left hand. So first of all, I'm just going to stabilize your hand here. If you could just bend your fingers up and down, great. And then again, up and down, great. And then one more time, up and down, great. Okay, so all of those small joints seem normal, which is good. I'm just going to stabilize your hand here. If you could move your thumb out, great. So extension is good in. Flexion is good. If I could just get you to lift your thumb up that way, so abduction is good and back down. Great, so adduction is good. And if you could just connect your thumb to each of the tips of the other fingers, great. So opposition is good as well. So all of the movements of the thumb seem to be within normal range of motion. Um, and because all of the active movements are fine, it's I needed to do the passive movements. I'll just do that on the other side now. So now I'll just do a few special tests of the hands. So first of all, um, if I could just get you to give me an OK sign, great. Um, I'm going to try break the O, so just try keep your fingers together. Yep. Yep, so upper positional strength is good. If I could just get you to sort of do like a fist but have your thumb overlying the fist, um, sort of like you're holding a key, so this is key grip. I'm going to first do it on your left, so place the piece of paper in between. I'm going to try to take the piece of paper out, hold onto the piece of paper for dear life. Great, I'll do that on the other side. Okay, now I'll move on to doing from its side. So if you could place your hand nice and flat like this for me, I'm gonna place the piece of paper first of all on your left hand in between your thumb and the rest of the fingers. Hold on for dear life. Great, okay, I'll do that on the other side. Now I'll move on to doing grip strength. So first of all on the left, if you could just squeeze onto my fingers, I'll try to take them out, don't let me. Great, I'll just do that on the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna do a practical test. If you could just write a sentence, hello, or whatever, onto the piece of paper. Yep, so it seems like you're able to move your fingers and coordinate things normally. Fantastic. And now I'll do Hoffman's sign, which is a test to check for upper motor neuron lesions. So if you could just relax, I'm just going to isolate your middle phalanx. And I'm just going to flip down on your other finger whilst checking for the movement of those beside it. And it doesn't seem like there's any abnormal movements of your second or fourth finger, which is normal. So that concludes all of the assessments that I wanted to do on your upper limbs. Thank you for being so cooperative. I'll be sure to pass on all of my findings onto the team. Did you have any questions at all? No. Great. Thank you.